This is ABC 57 News at 11. ABC 57 News breaking news coverage out of Elkhart. The Elkhart prosecutor's office confirming one of the suspects in Thursday's bank robbery and police chase has died after being shot by officers. This man, 30 year old Corey Bailey, is dead, according to police, and two others are in jail after a bank robbery turned into a police chase and ended in a shooting. And now here at five o'clock, we are learning new information about what happened and the people allegedly behind it. ABC 57's Haley Fixler joins us live from where this police chase ended. It's on the corner of 6th and Wolf in Elkhart. Record high water levels are causing widespread flooding across Michiana. Several communities have declared emergencies and are now evacuating residents in danger. Thank you for joining us on ABC 57 News at 530. I'm Brian Connie Bear and I'm Colleen Borman. The rain may be gone for now, but the downpours and that melting snow may leave many areas underwater. Yeah, take a look from Sky Drone 57 in Goshen. You can see trees and parts of parks completely covered in floodwaters. Many businesses in Goshen have closed down after a state of emergency was declared there this morning. ABC 57 First Warning Neighborhood Weather Chief Meteorologist Tom Combs is live for us. He's at Central Park in Mishawaka where the water is rising as well. Tom. Yeah, a lot of Michiana is looking just like this. Here's what I want to show you. The storm drain is actually bubbling up. The water table is so high here. The water is coming up out of the ground. It's ABC 57 News at 5. Downhill. 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 New bone chilling audio from the cell phone of one of the girls killed in Delphi, Indiana. Police believe it's the voice of a killer. ABC 57 News is live in Delphi tracking this major break in the case. Obamacare has just collapsed. No, 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 no. Well, town hall turmoil. Protesters swarming Republicans defending health care and immigration. Constituents saying, listen to us and not your party. I haven't seen anything like that in my lifetime, and hopefully I don't get to see it again. It was quite a mess. Quite a mess Tuesday afternoon as a police chase ended in a deadly accident. New details just coming in here over the past couple of hours. The deadly crash is our top story tonight and the most clicked on story on ABC57.com. Good evening, I'm Brian Dorman. And I'm Colleen Borman. Tonight we have the very latest details right here from the FACT team in our hands. Tonight we are breaking it all down for you tonight. We have live team coverage for you and your family. Deanna Gutierrez is working to learn more about the suspects and victims. But first, ABC 57's Kaylee Bourgeois is breaking down what led up to the crash. She is live for us tonight outside the County City Building, downtown South Bend, where the FACT team office is. Kaylee, have any charges been filed? Not yet, Brian, but a decision on that could come as early as tomorrow. We begin with breaking news at 11 o'clock. Tragedy on the toll road. Three people are dead after an erratic driver causes a serious crash, shutting down traffic in both directions. Right now, all lanes of the Indiana Toll Road are closed just east of the Mishawaka exit, causing major backups in both directions. Traffic has been at a standstill for more than three hours and is still being diverted off the toll road at this hour. ABC 57's Kylie Walker is live along the toll road right now with more on what led to this crash. Kylie. Yeah, Drew, tonight police say one woman, a teenager, and also an infant are dead due to this crash on the toll road headed eastbound. Now, ISP says that the cause of this crash may have been an erratic driver. Uh, there were several calls about a dark colored uh, Camry that was driving erratic uh, as it went eastbound near the 83 mile marker. In Miami, at least one person is dead and several more injured after a pedestrian bridge collapsed onto a busy roadway just days after that bridge was erected. ABC 57 News breaking news coverage out of Miami continues here at 530. I'm Brian Connie Bear. Just before two this afternoon, a 950 ton bridge collapsed, landing on eight vehicles that happened to be passing below. Nearly 100 rescue workers are on the scene digging through the rubble right now. They say at least one person is dead. Several more have been sent to the hospital and it all happened on the campus of Florida International University there in Miami.
Miami. ABC 57's investigative reporter Drew Gardner is taking a closer look at how the construction of this bridge may have played a role in all this. Drew? Well, Brian, ABC 57 has learned bridge workers have told reporters on the scene. The and I'm Torian Small. Today we were the only local station from Michigan live in the White House as a Vietnam veteran received the highest honor from the president. We'll be taking a close look at his heroic journey in minutes. Come on, um, drive-by shooting, that's, that's not, you know, we shouldn't be doing that. Well, neighbors are upset after bullets flew in South Bend. Today, a nine-year-old boy is dealing with the consequences. That is our lead here on ABC 57 News at 5. Thanks for joining us. I'm Colleen Borman. Where South Bend's tallest tower finally has a new resident. We're taking you inside the brand new Aloft apartment. I'm ABC 57's Tori and Small. And I'm Taylor Popolars. We are live in Indianapolis where President Donald Trump just finished introducing his tax reform. Yeah, we're talking to local leaders and breaking down what this could mean for you. And a live look now at the ABC 57 First Warning Neighborhood Mobile Weather Tracker from the streets heading right into downtown South Bend. The snow continues to fall here at 530. And we start our newscast with your first warning. Thanks for joining us. I'm Colleen Borman. I'm Allison Hayes with Vahid Sadrazadi in Orlando. A fourth Notre Dame football player was suspended today. And we're going to hear from head coach Brian Kelly in just minutes. And trying to stay warm as the temperature continues to drop. The city of South Bend has warming centers, but they're not always open. And it's a snowy Saturday here in Michiana. For some areas, the flakes have been falling all day long, and it's not over yet. The first warning weather team says it's going to keep on coming down. Let's get right out to live team weather coverage for you this evening. ABC 57 first warning neighborhood meteorologist Tyler Seabury is behind the wheel of the first warning mobile weather tracker. We'll check on the roads in just a minute, but first, Chief Meteorologist Tom Coombs is tracking this round of snow, Tom. Round and round and round. Here's Eve in Michiana. This is a live look at the first ever celebration at the Loft Hotel in downtown South Bend. We're ringing in the new year here and all around the world. But first, lake effect snow. Barron and LaPorte County both buried in nearly a foot of snow today. Police and traffic agencies say this is nothing they haven't seen before. Yep. Live team weather coverage all across the area. ABC 57's Kylie Walker is trying to keep warm with others in South Bend. And Andrea Alvarez is looking at snow removal and those road conditions. But first, ABC 57 first warning neighborhood weather meteorologist Alex County is checking on your forecast. And Alex, what are you tracking? Well, hey. Notre Dame Fighting Irish are in Orlando. They're prepping for Monday's Citrus Bowl game. But new today, the Irish will be playing without another scholarship player. ABC 57 Saturday kickoff host Allison Hayes and anchor Vahid Sadrazadeh are live in Orlando for us tonight. And Vahid, Allison, break it down for us. What does this mean for the team and Monday's game? Well, you're absolutely right. Running back Dion McIntosh has been suspended. He's been sent home from Orlando to back to his home in South Florida for violating team rules. He is now the fourth player in about two weeks to be suspended from this team. Allison, kind of surprising news here earlier today, and as you're seeing highlights now of Dion McIntosh from this season, he saw considerable playing time throughout the 2017 season, had 368 yards on the ground and five TDs. So he was a big contributor for the Irish. He's the second scholarship running back suspended joining C.J. Holmes. And now you can see here those two, along with wide receiver Kevin Stefferson and tight end Alizé Mack, were also suspended last week. All this while wide receiver Chase Claypool is sidelined with a shoulder injury. All our crews are everywhere. I'm live in Mishawaka. Our ABC 57 team weather coverage of the flooding continues during our 90 minutes of news next. And more rain in the coming days is going to make it difficult for the floodwaters to recede. I'll show you how much more to expect this weekend at 530. ABC 57 News has a team of reporters spread throughout Michiana right now. We are in Elkhart, St. Joseph and Berrien County right now. Live team coverage continues in minutes. As the snow continues to fall, it will wrap up tonight, but we're getting snow totals 10 to 12 inches. I'll show you the snow reports next. Elon Musk has a real hot seller on his hands. Yeah, now. we'll tell you how he raised millions of dollars by selling actual flamethrowers. If we go down, then we go down together. Oh, it's going down at Notre <laughs> Dame. We'll tell you when the Grammy winning duo, the Chainsmokers, will be serenading the Irish.
Well, that iconic song now at the center of a billion dollar lawsuit. Spotify could be on the hook for paying songs it didn't have the rights to. And you've heard the old joke, why did the chicken cross the road? But I bet you've never heard about how the police stopped him. Carnival Cruise Chaos. 2,000 people forced to return to port after security failed to gain control. Action, but mostly inaction. The Indiana legislative year is over and some important issues still need to be resolved. And while students walked out of class, a custodian checked for cash. Students robbed during Wednesday's national school walkout. ABC 57 News at 6 starts right now. We've been here about two years now, and it's been a problem since day one. Work is finally being done to help neighbors who've been fighting flash flooding for years. ABC 57 investigates now getting some results tonight. The repair work comes just two days after ABC 57 investigative reporter Clifton French discovered some confusion about who was responsible for a damaged drainage culvert in Berrien County that was causing repeated flooding. He's live in the studio tonight. Cliff? Yeah, Brian, less than 48 hours after we did a story about the flooding problems in that Berrien Springs neighborhood, crews were out there doing some major work. Makes me very happy that we're going to get some relief. This is the beginning of relief for Matt Hunter and his neighbors. We've been here about two I years. I think it'll, it'll uh, work well. My hope now is that there's just a little bit of relief. And I was told today the process of transferring ownership of the ditch to the drain commission is already starting, but it may take a couple of months. Once that is done, the ditch will also be routinely maintained. I'm live in the studio tonight. Clifton French, ABC 57 News. Well done, Clifton. If you have an issue you think we should investigate, send a description of your problem to our email tip line. That's 57investigates at abc57.com. Or you can tweet at us using the hashtag 57investigates. And ABC 57 News is following breaking news out of South Bend for you this evening. A nine-year-old boy gets shot in the hand on Carroll Street late today, but it's still not clear exactly how it happened. He was then driven from Carroll Street to a Phillips 66 gas station on Lincoln Way East by someone. Police were notified of all this just before 4.30 this afternoon. The boy was taken to the hospital with that injured hand. ABC 57's Andrea Alvarez reports police are now leaving the scene there. Stay with us for any new information. We'll bring it to you as soon as it is made available. And just into the ABC 57 newsroom right now, a major drug bust in Plymouth with a child involved. At about 8.30 this morning, the Marshall County Undercover Narcotics Team raided a home on Lake Avenue. During the search, officers say they found 43 grams of crystal meth, 46 grams of marijuana, and some ecstasy pills, along with three fully loaded handguns. The two people inside were arrested, and the Department of Child Services took a child who happened to be in the house during the raid as well. <laughs> A massive fight caught on camera inside the Benton Harbor High School cafeteria. Police were called in to break it up on Wednesday, but now several questions remain unanswered about the response to all this. ABC 57's Taylor Popular has got his hands on two videos showing that brawl. He joins us live outside Benton Harbor High right now. Taylor? Good evening, Brian. Besides issuing a statement, district leaders are staying quiet about this right now. But what we know from those videos is that dozens of students were involved in a lengthy fight here inside the high school yesterday, and it appears a few adults were trying to intervene. Now, the videos are hard to watch, but they show students wrestling each other to the ground, punching each other right in the face, and even continuing to fight in a stairwell outside the cafeteria. Interim Superintendent Patricia Robinson declined my request for an interview today. She instead sent me a statement from Board President Marletta Seats, which reads in part, the board will continue to work with its partners to ensure that students have the opportunity to safely pursue their educational goals. It is our belief that each child in our school buildings deserves a safe learning environment, and the board will take all necessary steps to protect our students. Now, I was able to confirm today that the Benton Harbor Department of Public Safety and the Berrien County Sheriff's Department did respond to this fight yesterday. They told me no arrests were made and there were no serious injuries, but we still don't know what led to all of this. If you want to see more of those videos, you can check out my full report right now on ABC57.com. I'm live in Benton Harbor, Taylor Popolars, ABC57 News. Still watching some storms starting to flourish on the radar picture. Temperatures are still fairly muggy. 
but that mugginess is going to be going down and it looks a lot milder, not just for tomorrow, but as we begin the month of June. For a look ahead of that, we'll send over to ABC 57 First Warning Neighborhood Meteorologist Tyler Seabury. Tyler? Tom, yeah, if you're sick of the Florida-like humidity and heat, well, the next 10 days are probably right up your alley. We're There's talking lower heat and the lower humidity. For now, live in the newsroom, I'm ABC 57 First Warning Neighborhood Weather Meteorologist Tyler Seabury. All right, Tyler, thank you. More than a dozen dogs left to fend for themselves in rural Marshall County. The prosecutor's office now stepping in to help the Humane Society find whoever was responsible. ABC 57's Haley Fixler joins us live from the Marshall County Humane Society tonight with more on all this. Haley? Well, Brian, I actually went out with the director of the Humane Society this afternoon to see if any more dogs were caught in those traps. This morning, the grand total of rescue dogs was 12, but she believes there's more out there, but she wants to find that person responsible. Trapping dogs, trying to catch the little dogs that were dumped out here at the Dixon Lake. Somebody called us, saw a little dog. Um, it was had ran through his yard, brought a tra just brought a trap with me. It's you cannot feed or house or care for your pets. Call the Humane Society first. Let us try to help you. Now, because 12 dogs is a lot for a small facility like this one to handle, surrounding rescue have stepped up to get those dogs fostered so eventually they can be adopted. Live in Plymouth tonight, Haley Fixler, ABC 57 News. New at 6, a St. Joseph County police officer appeared in court today accused of domestic battery. 50-year-old Lonnie Forsman is a 17-year veteran of the St. Joe County Police Department. On May 19th, he was arrested for allegedly pushing his wife and threatening her with a gun. His wife appeared in court today and actually asked the judge to overturn his no-contact order so they could see each other. And the judge granted that request. Court documents allege Forsman threw his spouse against a wall and was threatening to kill her and then kill himself. Forsman is on leave right now from the County Police Department. And a warning for anyone driving in Marshall County near Bourbon. State Road 331 will be closed between US 6 and US 30 for chip sealing. The stretch is on the east side of the county. The work starts on Monday. Chip sealing is a cost-effective way of resurfacing a road, extending its life, and hopefully saving money on future repairs. Drivers are encouraged to follow the posted detour signs during that work. Well, food, music, and good times. It's festival season in Michiana, and Niles will be rocking this weekend. Still tracking storms, another roundabout to move into the Lakeville area towards Napanee. Tracking those next.